Good morning, we want to welcome you once again to Stony Point. We are so happy you've joined us for our virtual service. So many of you tuned in last weekend and we were thrilled to see you and hear what you had to say. Um, and we hope you will continue to connect with us during this time, this way. And there's several ways that you can do that. First of all, you can uh, link into our social media on Instagram and Facebook and comment and let us know. We love seeing your pictures as you uh, streamed the service last Sunday with us. That was a great opportunity to connect that way. And we have a new way to connect this coming week. Um, several of you have asked about prayer and how to request prayer. We do that so easily when we're here at the building as we connect with one another. Um, and so we've offered a, a prayer email. And you can do that by uh, sending prayer requests to prayerrequest at spcfcog.org. And you'll get a response there. Um, and you can uh, send anything you have needs for. We'd love to hear from you as we want to be praying for you. In addition, if that really speaks to you and you'd love to be involved in praying for others, you can send to that email as well. Um, and let them know you'd love to be a part of the prayer team here at Stony Point. We'd love to connect with you in that way. And I have one other thing to share with you. As many of you know, even in your own houses, as people are being laid off and as things get tight, um, budgets can get tight. And here at Stony Point, uh, we still have bills and we have still have ministry that needs to happen. Um, and several of you asked about ways that you could be involved in giving at Stony Point during this time. And so we've set up several ways that you can do that. The first is you can mail here to our church office. And you can find the address on our uh, church website or at the end of our service today. It'll be posted. Or you can go to our new church website, spcfcog.org, and you can click, uh, click on the Give button, um, and it'll take you to PayPal, and you can donate that way. And we so appreciate your faithfulness during this time and helping us to minister both virtually and in person and on the phone as we connect as a church community. Now, please join us for a time of worship. Good morning again this morning, church. We welcome you this morning. We are glad to be able to worship with you once again. God has just impressed upon my heart this week that so much has been changing in our world and around the world all this week, but our God is unchanging. That he, the God of the mountains, is still the God of the valleys, and that he is an unchanging God, and we're going to worship him this morning. I heard several of you last week told your kids to stand up, we're having worship. You worship how you want this morning if you want to stand if you're in your pajamas, if however it is that you're worshiping God, worshiping God this morning with us, we invite you. Amen. Let's worship Him together.
even though you might not be physically here with me this morning, I can see your faces as I look out this congregation, know where you sit normally on a Sunday morning. And I can just imagine you here with us this morning. I thank God for that. I thank you that we get to worship and be together as a family. Amen? Amen. And we are never going to stop singing our praises to God. Still in point for sure.
you are God for us. Worship you this morning, God. I thank you, Lord, that you are an unchanging God when everything in our world is different and changing, God, and we don't know what tomorrow will bring, but you tell us in your word not to worry about tomorrow. Lord, we choose this morning to set aside all the things of this world that are going on and to focus on you, God, to set our minds on you, Lord. You know our thoughts. You know the worry. You know the fear, God. You know our hearts, Lord. But this morning, as we worship you, we choose to set our eyes upon you this morning, Lord. Help us to remember that, God, as we walk through our week. Help us to remember, Lord, that we're united in spirit as one, as a family of believers, that we are a family here. And we worship you, God. And we thank you for your sweet spirit that has been here with us, for your hand that has been over us. All of our lives, Lord, you have seen us through. And we thank you. And we worship you this morning. And as a church, we say, Amen. Good morning, church, and welcome to Stony Point Christian Fellowship. It is indeed a privilege to stand before you again to teach God's word. Let me just say to all of you how much we miss gathering during the week and seeing your faces and being with you and enjoying life and sharing life. We've done that over the cell phone and FaceTime. And we have enjoyed uh, the technology that is available to us, but it's just not the same and we look forward to the day that we're back together in worship. If you have your Bibles, turn with me, if you would, to the book of Matthew, chapter 14. We're going to be looking at the story of Peter, uh, Jesus walking on the water to Peter, and Peter stepping out in faith to uh, meet Jesus. I've been asked several times this week um, a combination of questions as to how we are to deal with this present crisis and situation, should it be prolonged? I've been asked where Jesus is in all of this and where we can find hope and what it means to walk by faith during this time. My heart and my mind has been drawn to a portion of scripture in the book of Matthew that I believe addresses all of this. Just before the story of Jesus walking on the water, we have the story of the feeding of the 5,000. And before that, we have the news arrives in G to Jesus and Jesus is told that John the Baptist has passed away. In hearing that John the Baptist has been killed, Jesus pulls away from the crowd and goes aside to be alone and to pray. The crowds find out that Jesus is there and they come to him in mass. And we get this picture of Jesus and the love that God has for us and the love that Jesus has for us in the way that he cares for the 5,000 men in addition to women and children. First of all, he spends all of his energy healing their sicknesses and teaching them and ministering to their personal needs. At the end of the day, caring for them and wanting them to be taken care of, he says to his disciples, feed them. And the disciples respond to Jesus by saying, what an what a outlandish request that you've given to us to feed this multitude. All we have are these loaves and fish. And Jesus says, bring me the loaves and fish. And he blesses them and he feeds the 5,000 men and the women and children. At the end of that gathering, we see something really wonderful about Jesus. In chapter 14 and verse 22, he tells us that immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd. I want to spend just a moment talking about what it must have looked like for Jesus to dismiss the crowd while he had sent the disciples away. In his full service ministry, it is loving people at the, the highest point. It is uh, wanting to completely minister to their needs and, and to fulfill everything that they needed from him. He, first of all, he heals them. He feeds them. 
And then he caretakes for them at the very end by saying goodbye to all of them. He shows us the completeness with which he will minister to us if we let him, if we look to him in time of trouble. And then in chapter 14, verse 22, we see him sending the disciples away so that he can go and pray by himself. After he has dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus comes out to them walking on the water. We have a situation where Jesus purposefully sent them away. He has uh, pulled aside Considering the last few days in which he has heard the news that John the Baptist has been killed. He's given everything of himself in an earthly sense that he could. He's physically worn out and he's ministered to the needs of the people. He's fed them miraculously and then he cares for them enough to be there to dismiss them and say goodbye to them and send them away to their homes. He then sends the disciples ahead of him out on the lake on the boat and he pulls aside again to pray and just be with God the Father. In the middle of the night, the King James Version says, in the fourth watch of the night, which is between three o'clock in the morning and six o'clock in the morning, he makes his way out to them, walking on the water, having sent them ahead. They awake to a storm. The boat is being tossed to and fro. They are Things are stirred up in their life. I imagine they thought to themselves, did not Jesus send us out here? Is he not the one who put us in this situation where we are out in the middle of the, the, of the lake and it, we, are, we are being tossed and, and turned in every way and then they see in the darkness this image coming toward them. Like most of us, they are not thinking at their clearest and they are not... Uh, uh, it's not an instant moment of faith and they don't instantly kick into super Christian and uh, suddenly realize this is Jesus. They're frightened by the storm. They're frightened by the darkness of the night and they see this image coming to them. And on top of all of that, they're now frightened by the image coming toward them. The scripture tells us shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. And I've got to tell you, in the last couple of weeks, I've talked with people that are terrified. People who are struggling and people who, who thought, okay, this is going to be a short-term thing. And we are experiencing presently in our world something that this generation has never known. It's catastrophic. It's an event that we could not have imagined. We, we could not have written it to where we would be uh, shut into our houses, sheltering in place because of a virus that has gone out so far beyond what anyone thought it was going to be. We're terrified. People have gone far enough into this now to where we, we are dealing with it. We've been closed in our houses so long that now we are talking about how we actually feel. And I'm hearing people that are terrified. People that are stirred up. People are asking me, where is God? And people are asking me, what should we do? And, and what is faith? At a time like this, what, what do we do at a, at a moment like this? How do we express our faith in God? Some have uh, questioned their faith. Some have doubted. Some have wondered about the strength of their Christian walk because they've had moments of fear. And then moments of high, high faith. And then moments of fear and moments of faith and moments of fear. We talked last week about not fretting from the book of Psalms, chapter 37. And today we're going to talk about what we do in the midst of this storm that looks like and testifies of a walk of faith in our life. And so we see Jesus coming. They don't recognize who he is. They say, it's a ghost, they said. And they cry out in fear. They're terrified, first of all, at the image coming. And then they look at it and they identify it in their mind as a ghost. And they are terrified. They, they cry out in fear. They're in the boat completely afraid. Life does that to us sometimes. It's not unchristian to be honest about how you feel about what is presently going on. 
It is better that we be honest about where we are in life than it is to pretend that we are somehow have a phony approach to faith and that we have everything under control and we will depend on our faith to see us through and somehow act as though our faith is in and of itself the power that will see us through. In reality, faith is not what will see us through. Jesus is who will see us through. Faith in Jesus will take care of us, but it is Jesus who will see us through. And we see this here. They're in the boat. They're terrified. They think it's a ghost. But Jesus immediately said to them, and I love, I love the fact that the, the Bible gives us the timing. And that Jesus doesn't stress them out. And he, and he doesn't make them wait to, to declare who he is. I, I love the thought that immediately, the Bible tells us immediately Jesus says to them, do not be afraid. Have courage. Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. When we're in the storm, we ask ourselves at times, where is Jesus? He shows up and he immediately says to them what they need to hear. Don't be afraid. Take courage. I am still here for you. Yes, I put you in this situation. Yes, I, you're in the boat that I put you in. Yes, you're in the lake that I put you in. Yes, I told you to go before me. And yes, you are here. But I'm going to be here with you in the midst of all of this. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Now, I want to talk to you about the different kinds of faith that gets expressed under stress like this and under circumstances like this when we live in storms. There is Peter kind of faith, which is kind of the personality that says, we'll just grab this by the horns and we'll ride this out. The Peter kind of faith has great proclamations, really strong proclamations. If you know anything about Peter's life, he's always the first to speak up and the last to speak up. And he's the loudest and he, he declares faith and he declares that he will always stand for God. And then he has these high, high, high moments of faith and then these low, low moments of faith. Well, this is a high moment of faith for Peter. He's at the time where he's saying, Lord, if that's you, just tell me. And I will have the faith to come to you. I will step out here of this boat and I will come to you. And so many times we look at this scripture and we think to ourselves, boy, if I could just be like Peter. Peter's just being himself here. He's not being extraordinary. He's just being who Peter is. This is the way Peter walks out his faith in life. In every circumstance, Peter is a get out of the boat kind of a guy. He wants, he's going to always be the guy. He wants everybody to know my faith is strong. I'm going to get out of the boat. It wasn't Jesus' idea that Peter leave the boat. It was Peter's. Jesus didn't say to Peter, if that's you, Peter, and if you have enough faith, you can get out of the boat and walk over here toward me. No, Peter had came up with the idea. I'm going to, and, and he gets accused of saying, uh, as if it was, he was saying to the rest of the disciples, look at my faith. I'm going to out faith all of you. And, I'm, and I hear people talking really big during this time. I've heard some boastful faith. People declaring what God's going to do and they know what God's doing and they've heard from God and they're going to speak for God and they're going to declare how to work this out and all of that. And, and they're sure God's working this way and that way. They got Peter kind of faith. And so Peter steps out and he begins to walk. And Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. And everybody's fascinated. And everybody should be. Peter kind of faith is an amazing thing. When you get out of the boat, you're just one of those guys that you just walk by faith and you just you declare you're going to and you just do it and you notice that God is there and you just step out and go for it. Peter went for it. But when he saw the wind, you see, sometimes when we have that big, bold kind of faith that just speaks up all the time and get, we get ourselves in predicaments where we step out by faith and we notice the wind is blowing still. Jesus is there. Jesus has bid him to come to him because Peter said, Lord, can I come to you? And, and, he, and, and Jesus says, come to me. And Peter steps out. But immediately the wind gets his attention. If you're going to have Peter kind of faith and you step out of the boat, you better keep your eyes on Jesus. 
You better not be distracted by the wind. You better follow through with that big statement of faith that you came through with. I'm more comfortable with the people who have called me up and said, Pastor, I don't know what to do during this time. And I've been able to say to them, be strong, be encouraged, don't be afraid. I'm not so comfortable. I don't understand. I can't relate to the Peter kind of faith where you're just saying, oh no, we're going we're gonna to tackle this. We're going to defeat this. We're going to... I know what God is doing and all that. No, that's... I can't relate to that. I'm impressed by it. It's certainly Peter. God uses Peter to do marvelous things and wonderful things. He, he, he's a wonderful man of faith, but he stepped out of the boat on his own. And then he looked at the wind. And I would say to you, don't look at the wind during this time. Don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to the voices. Don't listen to the talking heads. Make sure you know it's Jesus. Look to Jesus. Don't look to anybody else for where your faith is going to be placed and how you're going to walk forward and how you're going to get through this and how you're going to lead your family and how you're going to, at the end of all of this, learn what we're supposed to learn through this and move forward in God. So we see some success in Peter's faith. He gets out and begins to walk on water. That's fascinating. One of my favorite country songs is about a, a young a grandson who uh, thinks that his grandfather walks on water. It's a beautiful, beautiful song. That's the way I want my grandchildren to think about me, that grandpa walks on water. But I can testify to you, I've never, walking, I've never walked on water. I don't know what that experience is like. So I would have been fascinated. And when, once he started walking and was successful in it, I certainly would have thought to myself, oh my goodness, look what God is doing in Peter. But then he looks at the wind and no longer are we seeing success. We're seeing sinking. So we make big bold statements that aren't backed up by the word of God during this time. We're going to get out there in faith and we may sound right. And we may sound good. And it may look like we know what we're talking about. But as soon as the wind hits us and, and we realize the wind is still going and we take our eyes off Jesus, there's nothing but sinking left. The beautiful thing about God and about where Jesus is in the time of our fear, in the time of our, our distress, is that even when we sink and our faith is sinking, he saves us. It's a marvelous thing about Jesus that even when we have little faith, I want you to look at what Jesus says to Peter when he's saving him. Immediately, Jesus reached out and said, well, let me go back a moment. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, crying out, Lord, save me. <laughs> I love that, that, that Peter, who said, Lord, bid me to come, is now looking at Jesus and saying, Lord, save me. Save me, Lord. I, my, I've walked out here in faith on my own. I've done my own thing, and I've, I've looked at the wind, taking my eyes off of you, and now I'm sinking, Lord, and he cries out, Lord, save me. You can always cry out, Lord, save me. No matter what circumstances you find yourself in, if you have moments of doubt, which you will have moments of doubt during this time as to how things are going and, and what's the, how it's going to turn out and what's, what it's all going to be. When you have those moments, be sure that you remember Jesus will rescue you in the midst of this. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and called him. Now we have the Success, we have the sinking, we have the saving, and now we have the scolding. So he stepped out on his, on his faith. He turns and sees the wind. He starts to sink. Jesus saves him. And then Jesus said to him as he caught him, Oh, you of little faith. I want to share with you, and I want, I want you to know this. If you find yourself of little faith, your little faith, you may have little faith, but that little faith is in a big God. I've talked to people this week who have struggled with their faith. They, they're, they're worried, they're stressing. Some people call that sin. Some people, I've even heard from a theological and doctrinal perspective that if you're worrying, then you're doubting God and that's sin and you shouldn't doubt God because it, it is sinful and and, and you should always have faith in God. The reality is each one of us can testify of the moments where our faith has been little. But we can equally testify of when we had little faith, our God was big. 
And in this circumstance where people, Peter's faith was little, the God that he served and, and he was walking towards was big enough to save him. And our God is big enough to save us in the midst of this circumstance. We will find victory in God during this time. Now let me move forward. I want you to see a different kind of a faith. The Bible says immediately Jesus reached out his hand and called him, you of little faith. He said, why did you doubt? You started out walking in faith and then you saw the wind and doubt set in. And while he scolds him, he still saves him. And when they climbed into the boat, so he saves Peter and Jesus and Peter both climb into the boat. I can't imagine in that moment what the conversation was on the boat. I, I wonder what they're thinking. I wonder if they're thinking, is Jesus going to scold us too because we didn't get out of the boat? Is he going to question our faith? Is he going to make us feel as though we doubted him because we didn't step out like Peter did in faith? I got to tell you, I'm a stay in the boat kind of a guy. My feeling is Jesus put me in that boat and I'm going to stay in that boat until Jesus shows up to get me out of that boat or tell me where to go next. There's not much frill in me. There's not much risk in me. And I read this and I, and I read sermons after sermons and I read teachings and commentaries on this and people, people say, oh, you can't do anything unless you're willing to risk like Peter. I want to remind you, every man that was in the boat died for Jesus. They did some stuff for Jesus. They did some work that was powerful in the kingdom of God. If you just want to stay faithful and stay in the boat during this time when there's so much doubt and fear out there, I recommend you stay in the boat. Jesus did not get back in the boat and scold them. He did not get back in the boat and tell them they were, had less faith than Peter. He didn't get back in the boat and say to them, next time, guys, you better be willing to walk. He got back in the boat. He calmed the wind. And he saved them. And he rescued them. My challenge to you this morning, I think it's time to stay in the boat. They trusted Jesus when he said, get in the boat, go out in the middle of the lake. When the storm started to rise up and fear started to set in, they stayed in the same place God had put them. And my challenge to you this morning is we started before all of this happened. We were walking by faith. I want it to be said of us after this is over, they're still walking by faith. They're still trusting in the same Jesus that put them in the boat in the middle of the lake and the storm is rising and the wind is blowing, but they're staying in the boat that Jesus put them in. And that's my testimony this morning. And that's the, the testimony I want us to have as a church. It's not very exciting. It's not very risky. It won't give you the thrills of walking on water. But Jesus will make his way back to you. And at the end of the day, you'll be right where Jesus puts you. And you'll move forward in your work for the kingdom. You'll move forward in your ministry to your family and your ministry to your extended family, and your ministry to your neighborhood and your ministry in the church and your ministry in this community. You'll still be used of God having survived the storm because you stayed in the boat. I want to make sure you understand this morning that I'm not saying one faith is better than the other. One type of faith, one expression of faith is better than the other. I've got some wonderful brothers and sisters in the Lord who are confident and sure and who are speaking on behalf of, of their faith and who are making demonstrative statements and declarative statements and who are proclaiming the word of God during all of this with great victory and great power. And I trust that God has led them in their faith that way. I've got a, bu a bunch of brothers and sisters of the Lord who are saying, we're just going to stay in the boat. Jesus put us here. I'm sure he's going to come back with this same boat. He's going to call us. He's going to do whatever he wants to do with us next. And until he decides what he's going to do with us next, we're just going to stay in the boat. We're just going to move and march forward in our faith. I challenge you to continue to walk this walk of faith in the Jesus that your faith was in before this happened. God bless you. I love you. And the Lord loves you.
Psalm 42 says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while men say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God, with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you. From the land of the Jordan, from the heights of the Hermon, from Mount Bizar, deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love, and at night his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I say to God my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, Thou hast taught me to say, it is well. Peace the day when the fate. 